Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel and in this video we will be talking about oral manifestations in pregnancy. So let's get started. So uh, there are a lot of oral manifestations that we see in pregnancy and the main result and a very important factor which uh, actually influences that is the hormonal changes that take place in the body. So basically there's increase in progesterone and estrogen levels in the body which in turn also leads to change in the microflora, there is change in the saliva that flows through and also there are a lot of inflammatory mediators that are involved. So all those together pres uh, actually result in the oral manifestations that we see in pregnancy. So coming to the first manifestation that is we see pregnancy induced gingivitis and we also see periodontitis. So what is the main reason? So there is increase in progesterone and estrogen and in turn it also leads to an increase in the gram negative and aerobic bacteria in the oral cavity that is your porphyromonas gingivalis then your prevotella intermedia and other bacteroids and because of that it in turn with the uh, the plaque that is present in the oral cavity it presents with gingivitis and gingivitis uh, why it is that the estrogen and progesterone increases in the entire body why do we see these manifestations preferably in uh, in the gingiva and mostly in the marginal gingiva and the interdental papilla. So the main reason for that is it is found out that there is increased amount of estrogen receptors present in the uh, periodontal ligament fibroblasts and the periosteal fibroblasts and also in the gingiva which in turn leads to increased amount of periodontitis or gingivitis in the oral cavity. And it is mostly seen in the second month because there is an increase in uh, the hormone levels in the second month and it declines during the last month of pregnancy because the hormone level also starts decreasing and postpartum it gradually reduces or disappears on its own. Usually when you see gingivitis, there's a lot of plaque formation that is present in the oral cavity. Whereas in pregnancy induced gingivitis, we do not see a lot of plaque in the oral cavity. Then there is increased amount of tooth mobility which is seen. It is all mostly in the anterior teeth and that is also seen uh, due to increase in the relaxant hormone or uh, which is released by the ovary and it is usually seen in the last month and it is also seen that there is shift of mineral salts in the lamina dura which in turn leads to the increased mobility in that last month of pregnancy. Then we also see a pregnancy tumor or pyogenic granuloma that we see. So in pyogenic granuloma basically there is increased uh, angiogenesis. It is usually seen in the marginal and interdental papilla. It is usually seen in the anterior teeth and we have seen that there's increased vascul vascular endothelial growth factors and also clapped with irritation due to plaque or trauma. It can result in the proliferation of more amount of granulation tissue and can present with pregnancy granuloma in the oral cavity. It is painless swelling usually and it bleeds on easily bleeds on palpation. It can also sometimes present with irritation because if it grows in size and there is external trauma due to eating, due to brushing, it can present externally with ulceration also and that too this also reduces postpartum and results on its own. Then we see uh, after ulceration in patients with pregnancy and uh, we can see both minor and major after ulcers in pregnancy in the oral cavity. Exact reason is unknown but it is implicated that there is altered immune response and due to the dietary factors it can result in after ulcers. Also there is a uh, pregnancy is a stress a stressful situation for the body so uh, because of that also that can be one of the factors in which gives rise to 
after ulceration then another thing that you can see another manifestation that you can see in the oral cavity we can see pallor in the oral cavity because of uh, anemia in pregnant uh, ladies because uh, there is uh, there is increased requirement then you can also see erosion of teeth and it's seen mostly in the anterior teeth on the lingual or the palatal aspect that can be due to vomiting or it can be due to uh, the gastric acidity and that is due to the increased gastric emptying time or a prolonged gastric emptying time in pregnant patients so that can be seen and we usually advise patients uh, that they should not immediately rinse their mouth post vomiting because there can be more mineral loss if they rinse their mouth immediately rinse or brush their mouth after vomiting but we can advise patients to rinse their mouth by sodium bicarbonate solution because they help in maintaining the pH or neutralizing the acids that are produced during vomiting then the patients can present with TM joint disorders and it is usually seen that postpartum patients usually develop a lot of stress and they can seldom present with TMJ disorders then they can present with facial hyperpigmentation as well which is known as melasma so there's macular hyperpigmentation due to the hormonal changes which is seen on the face in pregnant patients and also there are salivary changes in the oral cavity so some uh, of the articles if you go across they suggest there is increased salivation the reason for that which is usually uh, seen because there's no increase basically there is increased nauseating feeling in these patients so because of that there is increased salivation associated with nausea in such patients then there's decrease in sodium concentration in the saliva there's increase in potassium concentration in the saliva and also there is a decrease in pH of the saliva then there's a lot of literature which suggests that uh, premature birth can take place in patients uh, who present with periodontitis during pregnancy so the oral health needs to be taken care of which basically suggests that whenever there's increase in these anaerobic gram-negative bacteria the lipopolysaccharides which are present in the bacterial uh, wall they actually uh, activate the macrophages which leads to increase in the inflammatory mediators like in, like interleukin 1 interleukin uh, 6 uh, TNF alpha and increase in matrix metalloproteinases and if these cross the placental barrier then they can result in premature birth but this is not definitive uh, there's a lot of controversy on this topic then another thing that you see this is not an oral manifestation but apart from that you can see uh, increased hypertension in these patients and there can be mild to moderate a hypertension there's a range so that is in pregnant patients whenever the uh, there the bp the systolic bp is uh, uh, is from 140 to 160 mmhg and the diastolic bp is ranges from 90 to 110 it is said to be mild to moderate uh, hypertension and if systolic is greater than 160 mmhg and diastolic pressures is greater than 110 mmhg then it is said to be severe hypertension then another thing that we see in these patients is gestational diabetes so we also need to ask the patient for their hba1c report to monitor the blood glucose level of the patients or patient over the last three months so uh, that brings us to the end of the video so in my subsequent classes i'll be discussing about the uh, dental management of pregnant patients and also which drugs we can prescribe in these patients so stay tuned and thank you so much for watching if you have any doubts and queries you can leave a message in the comment section below thank you